Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in part two of this series, we're going to be talking about how we can select images that we would like to put together, but they're just not quite similar enough to really look good together. And so we're going to start off with these first three images of the telephone pole. I'm going to tap the N key and then tap the tab key so we can see kind of on top here's the before and then here's the after. And I think that, that there's really two things that are key to holding the images together. First of all, um, I didn't like that some images had clouds behind it and some were blue and some was light. So I took them to grayscale and kind of popped that background, made it much more high contrast. And the other key are these leading lines that go from one image to the next. And since I was having a little bit of difficulty doing that, I'm going to show you a great way in Lightroom that makes this really, really easy. OK, so we'll go back to the grid view. I'll select the first image and we'll go over to the develop module or tap the D key. So the first thing that I want to do is take it to grayscale. So we tap the V key to do that. But you'll notice that we can still see those clouds. So what I did is I went to this HSL color in black and white and I grabbed the targeted adjustment tool. Because what that allows me to do is click on the blue of the sky and if I click and drag up, I can lighten the sky. And if I click and drag down, I would darken the sky. Well, because I want to decrease the contrast between the sky and the clouds, all I needed to do was click and drag up to remove that differentiation between clouds and background. All right, excellent. We also might want to go to the basic panel. And you can see here in my histogram, even though this looks like it's a bright background, it's really not. So let's take up the exposure a bit. And that's looking much better. Now we'll go to the next image. And again, we'll tap the V key to take it to grayscale. And again, let's increase the exposure. Now, I'm increasing the exposure a lot on this image. And to be honest, I should have done that in camera. So the problem is, even though I can do it here, when I do this, I'm adding a lot of noise. The other thing that you're going to see is that I'm kind of cheating because this did not start off as a horizontal image. If I tap the R key to go to the crop tool, look, it was a vertical image. And so I'm cropping a significant amount of the image out. But I need to do this because I need to also straighten this telephone pole. And when I click and hold my cursor down, you can see we get that nice grid overlay. So I can go ahead and straighten that. And then tap the Enter key or the Return key. Now I might need to move that crop in a minute because we can't really see how all these images are aligning. But that's OK. I'm going to do the same thing to this last image as far as taking it to grayscale and really scooting over the exposure and lightening this up and getting a much, much contrast here. So at this point, I started thinking, you know, how can I see all of these images at one time? Certainly, I can see them down here in the film strip, but that wasn't giving me a big enough view. So what I did is I clicked on this second monitor option. Because what that does is it brings up this secondary display, which I can put into survey mode. So if I select all three of my images, now I can see them next to each other. Of course, this is still really quite large. So let's just make it a little smaller and bring it down to the bottom. But now we can see that as I crop this top image, or as I make adjustments to one image, I can see how that looks next to the other images without having to take this film strip way up. So let's go back to this first image here. Obviously, I need to change the exposure on it as well. So it's kind of matching the other exposures. That should be good enough for now. But I did also notice something else. And that is, if we scroll down and we go to our lens correction, I automatically have my lens correction enabled on all of my images. But you'll notice that I've turned off the ability by default to correct the vignette. I actually like when I'm shooting with a wide angle lens, I kind of like that little vignette that it adds to the edges. So by default, I have that turned off. But this might be a case where I actually want to turn that on because then I'm going to get a more consistent sky along the edges. I wouldn't get that vignette because what I would really like is for this to look much more consistent between the images. All right, so I can go to this next image, kind of do the same thing, just double click vignette to turn off or well, I shouldn't say turn off. It's actually turning on. It is allowing the profile to correct the vignetting that's happening in the lens. So now we're going to get kind of a smoother background there. And again, it's just kind of a process of going back and forth. I can see now that this one needs a little bit more exposure. It's a little bit darker. But 
really it's just a little give and take to make these look similar. And without the secondary display, I was having such a hard time with this that I just thought it was mandatory that I share it with you. Then you can see here that these don't line up. And actually, I don't have quite enough space at the top of this image. So let's tap the R key and scoot this first one down. And you can see, watch as I scoot it down, now I can see the relationship between this and the other image. So I can quickly make my adjustment and make sure that these two lines actually meet. Now this line on this image is a little bit wrong, so let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice, of course, that this one isn't cropped at all. So I'm going to need to crop this. So I'll just drag in a crop from any angle. It really doesn't matter where, because it's hard for me to grab that one down there. And then we'll just reposition the image. right? So now I can continuously drag either a smaller or larger crop in order to get the exact crop I need for those two lines, these two lines right here, to align with one another. And right about there, I think I've got it. So hopefully that'll be helpful as far as when you're taking images. You know, I chose these images on subject matter and the fact that they had these leading lines. They didn't look similar enough to put together as a triptych as is when they were in color, but taking them to this more high contrast state and aligning those power lines really, for me, pulled the three images together. OK, let's go back to the library module now. And I'm going to close my secondary display. And let's just take a look at all of these images here. I've selected them all. I tap the N key. This series here are the before images. This is what the image sequence looked like. And it really does matter, especially when you get past two images, it matters what the sequence is, right? So for me, for example, putting the images in this sequence just doesn't make sense at all. It's not balanced. So I want to put the main subject or the most graphical image in the center. This one's very balanced. It's nearly symmetrical, although it needs to be cropped a little because it's not quite straight. Then we've got the two horse hairs on either side. This one's a little bit busy right now. I definitely need to crop it down. And then we've got the two images of the horses on either side. And so I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but I'll show you quickly some of the things I did that help. One of the things you'll notice, look at the difference between this horse's eye and this horse's eye. To me, that makes all the difference in the world. Let's just select those two. All right, I'll grab this first one and then also grab the second one. And if we go into compare mode by tapping the C key, that allows me to zoom in. So what you can see is that not only when I converted this to grayscale did I add a little bit of exposure, but I actually dodged this area right here so that you could see into the horse's eye. And it's that kind of engagement with your subject that's going to draw or, or kind of um, connect the viewer with your photograph. All right, so let's go back to just the grid view here. And I will start with this image, and we'll go over to the Develop module by tapping the D key. And we can zoom out here. So, so what would I do first? Probably just simply tap the V key. That's going to take it to grayscale. Because look, I'll tap it again. This green and this blue just aren't doing anything. They're not helping, and they're not going to help form any continuity between all the other images. This looks very cold. I want the images to look warm. How on earth is that cold tone going to match with this kind of later in the day shot where there's a lot of contrast and stuff? Those are the things I'm looking to work on. OK, so back to the first image, tapping the V key to get the grayscale, bringing up my exposure, making sure that I don't clip it here. I don't want to go too high. And then adding a little bit of color back into this. Um, and adding a little clarity. Clarity will give me a little definition. See how it's adding the contrast there? So if I had one image that was shot um, with less light, maybe foggy morning like it was this morning, and I wanted to make this image more contrasty to match the other one taken in bright sunlight, this is a good way to do it. You add your contrast. You add your clarity here in the sliders. That's a little too much for me, though, so I'm going to back off a little bit. I'm going to go down here and use my split toning to just add a little bit of saturation. That's too red, but I'm going to pick a nice sepia tone, not too yellow, maybe right about here. I actually have a preset right over here. Let's see what color I usually like. About 41 and 40 might be a little too much color. I might just back off on that a little bit. And if I wanted to do something else, like add an effect, like maybe I want to add a slight vignette, although be careful here. 
Um, I really actually like keeping the navigator open because sometimes when you add a vignette in the larger area, you don't really see that as a thumbnail view, it's really obvious that that vignette has been applied. So I like to look in both places at, at two different images because at different sizes, images can look very different. I'm also going to change this to color priority. That's going to make it much more subtle. Back off a little and add a huge feather to make it as, as soft as possible. Then I mentioned um, going into the eye here. Really, really simple move. All we do is we grab our adjustment brush. Let's reset that saturation. You guys know that you can reset any of these sliders by just double clicking on the word. And I'm going to bring the exposure up quite a bit to make sure we can see the change. Let's get a larger brush using my um, right bracket key, or um, you can also use your scrolly wheel, but I'm using the, uh, the tablet. Oh, that was not a very smooth paint stroke, but I think it's going to be okay for now. The only thing is, you know, obviously it's way too much, so we can just back that way off. All right, but let's zoom back out here. All right, so let's just Command-0. Um, I'd probably want to go in and be a little bit more accurate, but for right now, that's okay. So there we've, we've got a connection now between that horse. We've got it a neutral color, um, a little bit of sepia, a little bit of a vignette, and now I want to apply that to all the rest of the images. Easiest way to do that is simply in the film strip, select them all, and click on the sync button and determine what it is you want to synchronize. I don't want to synchronize everything, so I'll click check none, right? Because they might be cropped differently. Um, I don't want that local adjustment on every single image. But I do probably want the effect, the post-crop vignette, the treatment, the auto black and white mix, and the split toning. So then I'll hit synchronize. It'll convert all the rest of them to grayscale, but I will need to go in. In fact, let's show our secondary monitor again. I will need to go in and brighten some and darken some, but it's so much easier to do so after they're in the right kind of general ballpark. So in this case, I also need to crop this one. This is one I was telling you that that's just distracting up there at the top. Look at that. If I crop it just down to the three colors, it's going to go much better with this image and kind of balance it. I'll try to get as much of the white as I can in there, but I want to be careful and not get, you know, into that, that last horse back there. So let's just crop that right down there. It's a little darker than the rest, so we just come over here to our basic panel, add a little bit of exposure there. This image right here, we need to just adjust the crop, so I tap the R key, scoot that over. It's kind of funny, you might be thinking I'm, I'm not paying attention, but I am. Look at this great feature that I've got under Tools, this tool overlay I have set to Auto Show. It doesn't always show the grid overlay, it only shows it when I have my mouse down, so I can see this nice grid to make sure that the nose is straight. Hit Return or Enter. Again, add a little bit more exposure here. This one, I kind of need the opposite, right? It's too contrasty, so I need to bring down my contrast. I also want to open up these deep shadow areas, so maybe a little bit of fill light is going to open those up a little bit. Look at that preview right down here. Now, obviously, I would go back and forth and look at them in both, but right now, I'm just trying to get these really kind of as close as possible. I might want to bring down the sky just a wee bit, so grab my graduated filter, bring down my exposure just a wee bit, click and drag into the image. That's going to give me a little bit darker tone here. The nice thing about that is that I'm kind of trying to split up the image like this image is split up. So I want to make sure that something changes up here just like something was changing over here. And finally, we go to our last horse and we go to our general basic panel right here. We increase our exposure. Probably want to increase, let's put away our graduated filter, we probably want to increase the presence there, the clarity slider. We can close this, go back to grid view, tap the N key now that those are all selected, and you can see we've got a much more consistent and uniform set of images. These colors look a little bit off to me, so this area right in here, I'd probably want to go and just selectively darken it down. Now we could go in here for hours and start finessing them, but they, they just blend together after a few minutes so much so much better than they did before. And there we have it. I think these images now look great together. So we've removed those, 
those inconsistencies, right, by converting them to grayscale and adding that nice sepia tone, the nice vignetting to the images, kind of opened up a few of them that were underexposed, opened up the shadow area in those images, in the image that was taken in the brighter sun and the more contrasty light and given them a much more consistent look and feel. So I just think these would look great printed out like as huge prints as panels on a wall. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Julianne Cost. I hope you learned a lot in this episode about diptychs and triptychs and how to sequence your images and put images together that you might not have thought would work well. Thank you.